Welcome to CS225. I am your instructor, Robert McMillan, and we are going to go over the first chapter, our first module, using the book A Guide to Computer User Support for Help Desk and Support Specialists. Our chapter objectives are ways to classify end users, resources computer users need, and major categories of end user software, common problems encountered by users, job market demand, common ways to organize and provide support services, and typical position descriptions for user support staff that I think you'll find very helpful. Knowledge, skills, and abilities required for an entry-level support position, and career paths for user support workers. Where can you go from here? Let's start with end user computing. End user computing, the use of computers for both business and personal use. This would be anyone sitting behind a computer, such as I am right now, this would be considered end user computing, and computer support would be supporting a person who is an end user. Knowledge worker, employees whose primary job is to collect, prepare, process, and distribute information. And graphical user interfaces are screen images that enable users to access program features and functions intuitively using a mouse or pointing device. Most people use a, an operating system with a GUI, such as I am right now on Windows 8. So we need to classify the end users. Uh, we can classify them used by environment, personal home users, or work users. Skill levels, we can put into three categories, a novice, a semi-skilled, or an expert. Frequency of use, there's the occasional user, the frequent user, or the extensive user. We could also classify them by the software they use. Is it going to be word processing, email, accounting, accounting, or others? How about the features they use? Basic, intermediate, or advanced? And of course the relationship. Are they an internal user, such as a coworker? or an external user as a client. An internal user would be if you are an IT administrator at a company, whereas an external user might be if you are an IT consultant and you have clients that you do work for. Relationship to support provider. Internal users, in-house coworkers, as I mentioned earlier. External users, clients or customers of an organization. A couple of different ways to differentiate that retail customers and corporate users, so retail customers of hardware and software vendors, and corporate users who purchased products or services from a support services vendor. Basic hardware, add-on peripherals, peripheral devices, hardware add-ons that plug into a computer's system unit, hardware maintenance and upgrades, software and software upgrades. These are all resources that end users need. They need these to make their computers work the way they want them. A peripheral device might be a mouse, a keyboard, a thumb drive, a printer, all those things would be peripheral devices. Software and software upgrades, you'll be supporting people where they need to uh, put in a new version of software that they might have been using, such as Microsoft Office. More needs are supplies, data and information, technical support, and facilities administration and overhead. Supplies might be printer and toner for their printer. Uh, data and information might be information on how to run a particular program. Technical support when things don't go well. And facilities administration and overhead, these are needs to make the computer work. You need a desk, you need a phone, you need all different kinds of things that make the job work. Total cost of ownership, we talk about total cost of ownership with cars many times, but we also need to talk about them with computers. When you buy a computer, it's not just the cost of the computer that means the total cost of ownership, it's also what happens from that point forward, such as the add-ons that you buy to go with the computer, hardware maintenance and upgrades, many companies sell a hardware maintenance package and also include the upgrades. Software, of course, supplies, data and information, technical support, and facilities administration. You add those all up together, and you have your total cost of ownership. End user application software. 
There's lots of different software that end users will use that you will need to support. Electronic mail and instant messaging, of course that's just email, it's a fancy way to say that. Web browser, word processing, spreadsheets, database management, graphics, planning and scheduling, desktop publishing. You may not support all of these in all companies, but you'll definitely support all of them at some point in your career. Website development, educational entertainment software, enterprise applications, and industry-specific applications. These other ones are self-explanatory, but industry-specific applications we sometimes refer to as vertical markets. A vertical market is a steep market where there's very few people. If you think of a building, it's very wide at the base and very narrow at the top. Well, by the time you get to these vertical markets, you're talking to very few people have needs there, but those needs tend to be higher end than the base uh, products that everyone else uses. Problems end users experience. There's a waste of resources, user mistakes, computer crime, theft, invasion of privacy, abuse of users, computer viruses, and health problems. So let's talk about that. Waste of resources. Some examples would be purchase decision by a user who lacks expertise. They're going to order the wrong thing and that's just going to end up in the recycling bin. User spends excessive time trying to solve a problem. Many times this will happen and they'll end up wasting their day rather than calling you for help. We need to educate them that you will make things go better and faster. Worker spends time on non-business related activities. This could be uh, surfing websites and, and doing things on a computer that they shouldn't be doing such as playing games. User enters incorrect spreadsheet formula that can end up costing the, a company a lot of money because sometimes these formulas and these spreadsheets are all linked together. So that's something that you will have to support. User deletes or uninstalls needed software. Sometimes users have more rights than they should and they end up deleting stuff that the company wants them to have. User loses data because information is not backed up. This is fairly common, so we need to either train the users to back up their data to the server or force them to do it using a group policy. Worker tries to profit from valuable company information. This is part of a computer crime. This does happen and you will have to watch out for this kind of thing where they in send information that they shouldn't be sending to third party uh, companies or possibly even to themselves where they use it at a later time against the company. User becomes victim of identity theft by revealing bank account information. So we have to protect our end users from viruses entering in through email or from websites where they could end up having their computer scanned and have information stolen. Theft of resources, user illegally copies or uses computer programs or information, piracy. We have to make sure that all programs that the end user uses are fully licensed. Worker uses company internet access to sell items online. This is something that I've seen before on more than one occasion. So you really have to watch out and inventory products that the company has and monitor workers from doing this kind of thing. User fails to turn in or report lost USB drive. Well, this definitely could be a problem if it has company information on it and the USB drive is not encrypted. Worker installs company software on the home PC. That's something we have to make sure doesn't happen because during an audit, it's possible that the company would pay a steep penalty for having that happen. User accesses confidential medical information of family and friends. This could happen from the HR folders or if you work at a medical facility. So we have to make sure that there is no invasion of privacy from the end users. User inadvertently downloads spyware that communicates personal information on the internet. So we have to make sure we have a good anti-malware program installed and constantly up to date. Abusive users, worker sends unwanted email to coworkers. We have to make sure that there is not an abu abusive environment to protect the company and the staff from any kind of lawsuits. User displays off-color material visible to coworkers. We have to make sure that emails and various different postings don't uh, contain any kind of off-color comments or photos. Computer viruses. A computer virus is software created with malicious intent to destroy information, erase or corrupt software, or adversely affect the operation of an infected computer or network. An example, a worker inadvertently downloads virus software onto the office network. User forwards email attachments contaminated with the virus, and a user sends virus warnings that are hoaxes. 
some of these emails can be uh, fended off using a good anti-malware program, whereas other types of emails and internet surfing needs to be an education experience for the end user to make sure that these kinds of things don't happen in your company. Ergonomics, these are some of the health problems that can appear with an end user. This is a field that studies how to design a workspace that promotes worker health, safety, and productivity. Some examples, user develops carpal tunnel syndrome due to inadequate, inadequate work breaks. This could also be uh, happening to an end user who does take work breaks but just has problems with the wrists or other problems with their body that makes it difficult to use a standard mouse and keyboard. Job stress forces user into early retirement and employer refuses to supply ergonomics office furniture. These are all things that we need to protect our end users from so they don't end up suing the company and causing uh, problems with your department as well. Addressing the need for user support workers. There was a recession from 2007 to 2009. We're still feeling the effects of that today. Unemployment increased to over 10%. Less user support employment than in the 1990s. So we don't need as many workers as we used to during a recession. Of course, that has rebounded a lot, which is good. Some technical support jobs transferred overseas. Well, this does happen because of less expensive uh, cost for employees overseas and an increase in technical support work through temporary employment agencies. So in some cases an employer may decide to hire temporary employees instead of hiring an actual full-time employee. And of course the expansion of mobile technologies creates demand for support workers. So this is a whole new area that we need to support as end-user technicians where we need to understand mobile phones, we need to understand tablets, and, and anything that we wouldn't consider traditional computers. The user support function, computer user support, low-level services, help desk services, broad spectrum of services. So no matter what level you are, you are going to have to support these kinds of things. Technical support are for higher level services, advanced troubleshooting, and a much narrower focus. Uh, technical support might get paid more than computer user support technicians uh, because they have more skills. But no matter what level you are, you will have to support all of these different things. So let's take a look at how organizations provide a user support function. There's peer support, part-time user support, user support worker or work team, help desk support, user support center, user support as an IT responsibility, and user support outsourced to a vendor. So forms of user support. Peer support, informal colleagues assisting their coworkers. That is one type of support that does happen. Part-time support, some small organizations cannot justify full-time support staff. User support team, a formal work group provides support services. This would be a team of uh, end user support professionals. Help desk, a single point of contact for users, internal or external, in need of technical support. Physical location, telephone hotline, via email, website, or chat service. So you have to have a desk and a computer, whether at home or at the office, in order to support the end users. User Support Center, Information Center, provides a wide range of support services for internal users. User support as IT responsibility. User support may be organized as part of the IT department. So you're going to have a group of people in a large company, and some of those people are going to be end user support people. User support outsourced to a vendor. An organization contracts with the vendor to provide user support to internal or external users through a signed agreement. This is happening more and more, where your, if your job is going to be in user support, you may work for one of these outsourced vendors, and you may support a variety of different companies where they call you and you remote control into their computer or do other things to help support the end user. Let's talk about user support services. Staffing a help desk hotline, provide technical troubleshooting assistance, locate information to assist users, evaluate hardware, software, and network products, Coordinate organization-wide support standards, perform needs assessments, provide system installation, provide training on computer systems, prepare documentation on computer use, and perform 
computer facilities management tasks, and then finally assist users with software development projects. So as you can see in this graphic, there is sort of a circle of need that comes around. You have the help desk, needs analysis, troubleshooting, technical support, system installation, hardware repairs, and it goes all the way through various different information that you will be gleaning in order to support the end user. A help desk agent technically uh, is categorized as a level one position and the job title could be a level one help desk agent and there's an overview to this type of position. A level one help desk agent provides tier one technical support and incident and problem management to end users on technical issues with an emphasis on good customer service skills. You do need to be able to talk to people, make them feel at ease and provide support for them. There's lots of different duties. I won't go through all of them here, but you can download the slideshow and you can go into these in detail. So you, uh, a, help desk, a level one help desk agent fulfills a range of duties, including but not limited to the following duties. So you can go through some of these different ones. Qualifications, basic knowledge of computer technology, including hardware, software, and network operation. Uh, working knowledge, of course, of all these different operating systems, and we do need to add Windows 8 into there. And sometimes you will have to support Macintosh or possibly some Linux end users as well. You need to have expertise in system troubleshooting and problem solving, and hands-on experience. Experience with automated help desk management systems also does help. There are lots of different ones out there. Skills expectations, you need to have good time management, good interpersonal skills, ability to, to use diagnostic utilities so you can get to the root of the problem much quicker than without them, handle smartphone issues such as activation, configuring email and passwords, that kind of thing, uh, have current knowledge of what's going on in the industry and maintain an appropriate level of confidentiality because a lot of times you will get calls where there are secrets of the company that need to stay secret. Education and training, minimum of two years experience in a help desk environment, although in lieu of experience in a help desk environment, you can have an associate's degree and you should have an A plus or ability to pass certification exams that may be required. The A plus is the basic certification that almost every help desk or level one technician has. The next job title will be network support technician reports to the manager of network services. This position is responsible for supporting a local area network or a LAN operation to ensure it meets the business operation needs of the company. The position is at an intermediate support staff level, so this is higher than a level one, and is responsible for applying some judgment to resolve routine problems and make recommendations. Again, there's a lot of list of responsibilities here. Won't go into every one of them, but you can look at the slideshow later or you can pause the video. Uh, but some of these responsibilities are going to be the monitor the operation of the LAN, identify network problems, provide tier one level support. So again, you will have to always provide level one support, even if you are slightly higher than the help desk type of technician. Qualifications, uh, there's a few more qualifications than the last job position. So you're going to have to have uh, either a degree or rel rel relevant industry experience. Lots of knowledge, accuracy, good skills, and of course always customer service skills. Preferred qualifications, Network Plus certification, a little bit harder than the A Plus. Also covers some different knowledge areas. Working knowledge of Microsoft Office applications, that would also probably be a good idea for the help desk position. One to two years of experience in a technical customer support. Uh, military veteran is what a lot of companies are looking for nowadays, but it's not necessary. And you will occasionally uh, have some people that will request that you uh, communicate in a language other than English, and typically that may be Spanish. Knowledge, what a worker needs to know to perform a job. Well, you've got several different things here. It, they, you, they're not all inclusive. You could have some of these, but not all of these. Years of education, degree, certification, and list of specific topics. So every company is going to have different ones. Skills, what a worker must be able to perform well to do a job, expertise based on practice and experience. 
Abilities, functions a worker can either perform or not. Physical abilities, language abilities, special abilities. All different types of abilities you either may or may not have. Programmer developer, network technician, these are alternate career paths that you may take. Website maintainer, support manager, project manager, trainer, technical writer, security specialist. They all start with the end user support technician or help desk te technician. So in summary, we discussed early computers. Several industry trends during the 1970s and 80s resulted in end user personal computers. End users can be categorized in these different areas. Resources that impact total cost of ownership. We talked about the areas that are listed here as well. End user software includes all these different things. Primary goal of end user computing, make users more productive. Keep them working. Common problems related to end user computing include some of these different things that we've already talked about. We talked about ways to organize end user assistance, support services users need. User, re user support positions require a variety of knowledge, skills, and abilities, KSAs. Keep that in mind for some of the quizzes, which may lead to alternate career paths. So that is the end of our chapter summary. We will get into the next module, which will have a whole new set of criteria. If you have any additional needs, you can follow that up uh, with an email or a phone call to me, your instructor.